I'm sure I won two million plus, and, but I lost two and a half million plus. Winning can be an irresistible high, which explains why Americans spend more on legal gambling than movies, music, and sports events combined. John Harton was no exception. It was uh, the excitement, I guess, the, the thrill of the win, uh, mm -hmm. um, the competition, mm -hmm. you know, between me and the dealer or me and the horses. John but didn't intend to get hooked. It was just a couple of poker games here, some trips to the track there. His wife, Lisa, wasn't worried either. When we first got married, he didn't gamble at all. A few years later, John's company downsized, and he was out of a job. A good job, and... At 34, that had never happened to me. It just, like, devastated him. So with mounting financial pressures and a growing family... I turned inward and, and said, I'm going to figure this out myself. And, and I became hooked on the gambling and, and didn't look back. At first, it seemed like a hobby. He called me and he said, I won the house payment. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, great. One day a week turned into two. Within six months, John was gambling every day. He was addicted. I started noticing he missed birthdays. He'd miss our children's events. I mean, it was fun, but, you know, enough's enough. I did, had no idea the depths that he had already been in. John started to chase his losses, betting more to get it back. And he started to lie. I felt uh, sorry for myself. Uh, I felt that my situation was, uh, you know, where was God in my life? Mm -hmm. And I pretty much stepped out of reality and into that life mm -hmm. and then it got its hooks in me and, and um, uh, the next 10 or 11 years was a living hell. There were it's like an eight year period where I 24-7 thought about gambling. I would come in at five in the morning and, and she would think I was working and be real sweet and, and I'd been out gambling all night. John felt guilty but handled it this way. I said to God, you know, I deserve this lifestyle. My wife, my job, my kids, um, they'll be fine. But if Lisa hadn't worked several jobs and put assets in her name, they would have lost everything. I became a very angry, bitter woman myself. You start getting self-pity, why me? You know, why would my husband rather be at a boat than be home with me and our children? It wasn't like he, you know, physically cheated on me with another woman, but his mistress was the boats or the track. I pawned my wife's jewelry, I pawned my wedding ring, I pawned my son's baseball cards. I went into my parents' home at four in the morning and took the computer to pawn it. I needed the money to do my thing, and nobody understood. John, when I married him, was a wonderful man, great provider, a lot of fun, you know, very attractive, very, just everything going for him. But as he got into this, yeah. he wasn't fun. Oh. He was mean. Yeah. He, he became very angry and mean, um, very abusive. They separated several times. Finally, Lisa filed for divorce. I was kind of in my own little heart hoping it was a wake-up call because I really wanted to come back. Before Lisa delivered their third child, John did come back and did well. If only it had lasted. She was eight weeks old. And he told me that he was going to um, go out to the store and he'd be back. Yeah. And uh, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, he never came back. Yeah. And he didn't come home for 23 days. And I decided with or without John, mm -hmm. I was going to be okay. And with or without him, the kids were going to be okay because we were going to follow God. Over the years, John went to four rehab centers with no lasting success. By now, he no longer wanted to live, but he decided to try one more. I stayed there nine weeks. Typical stay time was about four weeks. Over the period of the nine weeks, I, I quit the gambling, the smoking, the drinking. The rehab was very good, John says, but from his Christian upbringing, he knew it wasn't the key. I knew if, if I had any hope whatsoever, I needed to give 100% to God. There is a God there, you know. He did have a son who died for us. He's forgiven me. Um, every day's a new day, and I haven't gambled since November 16, 2000. With the help of support groups and his faith, John has never returned to gambling. Lisa also got help and has this advice. Find out where you are with God and with Jesus and get your life right with the Lord. He is the only one that can sustain you through this. Rebuilding their home life wasn't easy or automatic. 
but with help, it's now stronger than ever. John also leads an addiction support group at his church. I spent most of my adult life hurting people, and I want to spend any remaining days and, that he gives me um, to encourage and help people that are in any kind of addiction, that there is hope, and that God can turn your life around. Somewhere in the Word, the Bible says that he, God will do exceedingly abundant more than we ever thought or hoped, and He has. I was blessed with a godly, faithful wife. I'm just very thankful that I have her here today. You know, I want to wake up now. I want to have that next day with my family. And I look forward to being with uh, God and Jesus in, in heaven for eternity.